Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting number 69. I thought it was kind of funny because it's June 9th, you know, 2015, 6, 9. Talk about timing. Um, as always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't here with us right now at 6, 9, although I mean, we'll get this posted up this afternoon, so hopefully there'll be a few hours left for some people, especially those of you farther to the west, which isn't a lot, actually, uh, from where I'm at. Anyway... Uh, moving on, we have uh, a little bit of additional tri uh, agenda than usual. We'll do triage, not as many bugs because, hey, we did triage last week and it means we don't have a ginormous backlog. Um, and then Heath wanted to bring up ETW logging, and it's good he's here because I have no more agenda other than that for it, uh, so he wants to talk about it. Um, and then we'll do any other questions, comments from the floor, um, and all that kind of stuff. But as always, I think we start with triage. Bob, you ready? I am ready. Sweet. Triage! Only four issues. And hopefully, and a couple of these are actually like left over from last time, I think. So, right, right, right down the bottom. Did PageHeap expose anything? Yes. Been two weeks. Should we resolve it? Uh, what do we resolve it? More info, and if they open it up, they can open it up with more information? That works. Yeah, okay. I've lost the mouse cursor, of course, because that's what happens here. Patch rollback works, but previous patch applied is not. This is the same. No, we have... Uh, Sorry, this is left over. It is left over, but we have data. Yay! Okay. So he has more information about how this works. Or doesn't work, I guess, as the case may be. Well, we're not going to take it in 3.9. Um, I'd be surprised if this was a regression. So we want to toss it in 3.11 since there's a little bit of information to go look at. Or do we want to put it in 3.10 and have someone hunt it down? Yeah, let's leave it for the moment. Um, let's leave it untriaged. I'll take a look at the data and report back. Very good, then. Port 4 six RTM and three V ten. Yes. Uh this is the EULIS? No, this is dot net four six the everything. We don't have right. that in in uh, three ten yet and I didn't want to leave it to my memory. Cool. Seems like a good thing to track and it's all in the right place. You want to sign it to yourself? Are you gonna do it or uh sure, why not? Well I'm just asking. Well, it needs to get done. Yes. Um, so, Wix 3.9, uh, R2, throw exceptions, things like that. Yeah, so John says he has no sound, and he, I'm going to say he can't see anything, but he is present. Um, and it sounds like, I don't know, this is like, it fails with an I.O. exception, which means cool, log file should point at it, put the PDBs next to it, should get line numbers. We should be able to figure out what's getting stuck. Right, so, um, uh, yeah. but he's he's on it, so we're not going to fix this in 3.9. Uh, do we want to put it in 3.10, or do you want to push it to 3.11? 3.10 and see how quickly he gets it solved? Um, that depends. So I'm glad that John's here. It's unfortunate that he can't hear me. Um, so I should probably type something in the IM window. Uh, basically, I think we just need more data about about what his plans are since he says he started to work on it. Um, it it's it might very well be something that we could take in 310, but it might also be something be we absolutely can't. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I will type something in the IM window. Uh, All right. So worst case, it's it's you know three eleven or four. Right. So we're we'll be revisiting this next week, hopefully with more information about the investigation that is undergoing with this thing. Yep, that works. But with I/O exception, this should be really easy, right? It's just drop the PDBs next to it and get a stack trace, and we'll be able to go ah, oh, yeah, or something. You know, put a retry around something, or who knows what. If it's right, really right. Proc, you know, battling for the same files kind of thing. Yeah, that's that's a fair point. Um, yeah, we have some retry, but it's kind of you know weak. 
Um, and it's not, yeah, it's not consistent, strongly consistent. Uh, also, yes, there's that. Um, okay, yeah, that sounds good. I'll leave it untriaged. Um, I'm yeah, it seems reasonable. Typing now for more data. Cool. All right, well, at least we'll be able to get this all up on YouTube, assuming Skype doesn't crash, a little gung shot we having everything else that we've had, and we can tell John, hey, John, go back to the part where your bug's up on the screen. And right. Listen. And try not to answer in line because we can't hear you at that point either um, because we will be in the future or something like that, however that works out. Um, I'm not sure that's how time travel works, but okay. Well, you know, something like that. And that's four bugs. That's not too bad. Um, well, two of them were left over. Um, one of them we got more logs for, so it's like, yay, go dig into those and it'll all be good. Okay, so going back, right? We don't have anything else today. No, I don't think so. All right, I don't think so. You, you just mumble, mumble, mumble. It's like you're being all quiet, trying not to. I'm, I'm scribing. Yes. That's what scribes do. Typing in the corner. Yes. All right. So ETW logging, this whip and that kind of stuff. Let me try to bring this thing up. So we're talking about this. Web here, this, yay. Oh, wait, my mouse cursor is actually back. How nice, nifty. I don't know why it's back. Uh, let's see. Heath, do you have audio? Oh, is that falling back to event traces loses fidelity? Proposal. This is in the considerations. Yeah, all right. Uh, da, 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 da. Such that that localized matter of calling one API or the other. Well, so we're pretty much set on still supporting Windows XP. We're still getting information that says we have to do that. Um, if we want to start, I mean, yeah, I, I guess we could not have plan dump work on XP. I think that would be fine as a fine place to start. I mean, you know, we can get all the deutal stuff in place for this and all those other kinds of good things and then do the rest of it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we could start doing this. I don't know um, if Bob's off scribe, scribe focus, uh, if we would take this in 310 or 311, but, um, or we could just do it in four. Um, so, you know. I, I would probably be fine with 3.11. 3.10, it would be, yeah, uh, if it were nicely isolated. So I'd say 3.11, since it's a feature, we probably should hold off on taking it, yeah. So, um, cool, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we can start on it, see how it goes, and then start applying it to more places as they are appropriate, I guess it's kind of that. Yep. So, all right. Cool. So that was the ETW discussion. I think, yeah, we could do this. I mean, we can do it at layers. Um, so moving on, Heath wants to talk about tests as well. Um, and that's a very open-ended thing. We have a, a bunch of tests that are broken. We have a bunch of that, you know, need a lot of loving to get them up to date. And um, we need to, you know, get them all fixed up and going forward. I, I it's it worries me because of the risk of regressions. True. So it'd be great if someone wanted to take the time to focus on the tests and fix them all. And essentially that's the matter of it right now. So we need to go through and scrub out tests that are busted and get them all working. I, I there's no other way around it. There's a whole lot of dead tests in there too that haven't worked forever. So uh -huh. Uh, rewrite the test harnesses again. We've, we've rewritten them like twice now. So, I mean, I don't know in three. I know in four we're all in X unit now, which makes the tests a lot less, you know, verbose and things like that. Um, I, you know, if, if we want to go through and start doing small changes. I guess I don't want to see one gigantic huge change. If we want to start doing small changes and chipping away at them, I think, yeah, we could do that. If we if we go that way, we could totally make it better. 
So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's like, yes, chew through the test to make them better. I think that's a fine thing. There's some reason we don't test just unit tests with DLL instead of testing all the MSIs. Um, we had the, well, a long time ago, the unit test thing, which wasn't a unit test, it was more of an integration test. It tested everything all the way around uh, from end to end, which uh, was easier, was more complete, even though redundant. Um, and, and they took longer, but they would cover everything and would sometimes find breaks. So that's why it was done that way. Don't know if I agree it's complete. Well, it was more complete for each thing that you were testing. You'd get dark, you'd get lit, you'd get all those things. So, so anyway, um, we've already started unit testing bits and pieces. In Wix 4, we've already started unit testing like Wix DLL, Wix Data DLL um, by themselves already. So in Wix 4, we started moving this direction. The problem is that there's still a lot of dead tests and not good tests and a lot of cruft in the infrastructure that really just needs time. You sat down and go through it. Um, but I'm trying to, I'm queuing up all my time to go finish the stuff I was doing in Wix 4 to make that code base uh, easier to work through because there's clearly a number of bugs in there. So that's where I've been focusing on that. Should we ignore those by default to avoid spurious errors? Well, we, we should clean them. So if it means it's going to take too long to clean them, then yeah, we can put ignore on them and get a whole bunch of warnings instead that says this test needs to be fixed. And if a test is clearly busted, we can delete it. But it's a matter of someone going through and doing the work. What's the priority, like burn versus core tool set? Uh, I, I'm not familiar with it, with Wix 4. I'm not familiar with the... Uh, I, um, at all this the tests point, that we have. I don't. I don't really care. It, it's like pick an area that you like more and do those tests. It really doesn't matter. It, it, right now, I don't think it's a matter of adding a lot more tests. Right now, I think it's a matter of cleaning the tests we have, the infer, you know, and where we're at, so that all the ones that we have are passing or gone if they're no longer relative, relevant. And then adding more, you know, we certainly can add more. And at that point, I'm like, yeah, you know, add them wherever you know you feel like doing work. The bulk of our tests over time have been mostly integration tests, not unit tests. Absolutely true. So, you know, but that, that was, that's why they're all big and heavyweight and do lots of stuff, which integration tests are nice because they verify, you know, whatever scenarios you want working, that those work, um, you know, as the user uses them versus unit tests, which can test a small functionality faster. Um, you know, it's just differences. Many times we'd find a bug in the decompiling of something after doing the compiler work, for example. And it was just like, oh, yeah, I always forget about that. So it had those advantages, but, uh, you know. But it took a long time to run them sometimes, you know. So anyway, it all needs attention is really what it is. need someone to go in and spend the time to do that. All right. Anything else out there people want discuss stuff? Things going on? Yeah, we should generally try to do these. Weeks. Although we just didn't get many bugs in these last two. Things. It's like that the bugs all get saved up for when we know we're going to skip one, right? This is the way it goes. But anyway, um, going, going. Anything else? People are still typing. A policy of checking in tests or at least the same PR would help. Uh, well, it's hard to put that policy in if we have such a mess in the test and can't point people to clean infrastructure and things like that. I mean, yeah, there's a huge thing that should be done. If someone wants to take the time, that'd be fantastic. It's really just a matter of time. I don't think it's even, it's not even hard work. It's just, you know, it's mostly drudge work and just doing it. So. Well, as long as they're broken, no one's going to pay attention to creating new ones. And we can't put a, a policy in place, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just can't. So, I mean, yeah, it needs to, someone needs, needs to get to a point where someone's like, yeah, I'm going to just fix this and, you know, be great. You know, 
Well, it sounds like what we could do is, you know, ignore everything that's broken today and require no new brokenness. Sure. Yes. But again, you that, have to go clean them. Have to get well, them cleaned up first too. So yeah. Yep. Well, I'm saying I'm saying we don't clean, we clean them up by ignoring the ones that are broken. That's fine. I, I yes, I think you'll find the infrastructure in there isn't fantastic. But yeah. Uh, Sean's point is I can't tell the ones that should work from the ones that never worked. Right. So yeah, it's a matter of that's what I'm saying. It's a matter of cleaning them, going through, going yes, this test should work this way, fixing it. Ignoring them will help. I don't know. We're just going to turn them all off. Okay, we can do that. <laughs> and then go from there. Yep, could do that. Otherwise, they're broken, and it's a completely thankless job to try to evaluate all of them. Yes. I'm, yes. Going through and turning them off to start with is a completely reasonable thing. I don't know how hard they are to fix either. You know, I just haven't spent time in there. I know there's a lot to do. That's all. And I'm trying to be real clear. It's like, I don't disagree. People could say we should do all this stuff. It's not going to matter until someone actually does. That's really what it comes down to. Would it be better to create new projects and move them into new projects as they make them work? Uh, I don't know how hard it is to move things into new projects and such, but I mean, yeah. I, if that's the easiest way to do that, I suppose. You know, I mean, either way you're looking at, your are counting. You're basically going, look, there are this many failures, and if you're setting them to ignore, your your the count is going down. If you're fixing them, the count is going down. I mean, what are we doing? The count is going down, and then you're adding tests, and the count goes back up. I mean, that's the nice thing about tests is you can just do one at a time, working your way through it, <laughs> making the world a better place. And I'm not aware of any tests that we've regressed intentionally, Heath. I mean, like, we've changed functionality and some things may be broken because of some functionality, but in general, 4 doesn't isn't that much different over 3. We should spend some more time. So, all right... Yes, someone should spend time to go do, you know, duplication. There's, yeah, there, right. Anything else that's like, <laughs> that isn't saying that we should fix the tests in different ways? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is like, cool. I'm going to fix this test. Great. Mail on. The Wix Des list can be just fine to do that. Should we try to tackle 10 tests per meeting here? Uh, I don't know. The meetings will go longer. and have to... I don't, we could maybe tackle one test per meeting here. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think there's going to be a lot to getting it sorted out up front of trying to fix it. I don't think it's going to be as easy as... Here, we're just going to fix this test now. Unless it is, like Bob says, just to ignore it, which definitely like, yeah, okay. Well, it'd be useful perhaps if we don't know what the state of the tests should be. We can discuss that. State of the test should be. Well, I.e., is it broken because it's, you know, bad, or is it broken unintentionally, or is it broken intentionally? If there's confusion, we can address that. Yeah, if there's confusion, I don't think there's, I don't think there should be much confusion about most. Of my, my, my general guess is that generally the tests should all work, and if they don't work, then probably something is broken. That's probably not the test, right? I mean, it just in general, like because most of the tests had value when we wrote them, and when they, we never got all the data. Out, so we're missing a lot of data for a lot of them, but that doesn't mean that the tests were invalid, right? That's my general assumption. And there may be some that you're like, so this test doesn't seem to apply anymore because it looks for X, and we'd be like, oh yeah, that'd be cool. So I, I'm, I'm, yeah. 
it's it's a, I think it's a matter of going through each test and going, cool, let's make this work again. Or, you know, like you said, turn off and then make it work again later. It seems we need something that works well incrementally. I don't know. The no, there's a number, and if the number is going down, then, I mean, if you're focused on tests, then, you, you know, you're not breaking other tests by fixing tests, typically. <laughs> typically. The point is, it might be better to count up successes than to count down failures. That's fine. Yeah, like, I mean, yes. Yes. Sounds like sounds like you guys, you know, someone of all this wants to go through and mark all the tests ignored. Fine. Can go do that. <laughs> <laughs> Go mark them all, ignore, and then we start turning them back on. Totally fine approach. Totally fine approach. I know that there's a lot of test infrastructure in there that is just, it's mostly overkill, and it tends to make the tests hard to process. That, I believe, is true. But I don't think they're, like, wrong. You may find that you don't need as much stuff in the tests, but the tests are all correct in general. And yes, the tests have been a challenge that nobody has wanted to undertake for that. Every time we this comes around, uh, every time this, I guess I get frustrated about this conversation because every time it comes up, people say, we should do all this, but nobody ever wants to. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. So basically it is, it's one of those tasks that I feel like until I go through and do the work to fix all the tests, it's not going to happen. So at this point, I'm like, I have too many things I have to do right now beyond that to go back and do all the test stuff. So so anyway, yes, it would be great for all the tests to be working. I totally agree with that, 100%. <sighs> Anything else? Any other topics to go about? Looks like Jacob's getting audio just in time for us to end the meeting. <laughs> and John will be next. Uh, he'll get his audio fixed, and then we'll be like, all right, cool, we're gone. Yeah, Jacob, so leaving, leaving a... a a test open and saying this is broken because of this bug is a totally reasonable thing to do. And when the bug gets fixed, it would turn the test back on and it would be like, yay! Or fix the test when the thing gets fixed. So yes, that happens. More in 4X than in 3X. But yes, that happens sometimes. So... All right, Jacob's got something. Anything else? Oh, all right. Given that Jacob's not having any decent audio things and neither's John, and sound like we're good. Yes, any other topics? I think next week we should do another run through the 310 bugs, Bob. And uh, it's our goal for an are. RC release. Oh, that's right. Is that, it's that soon, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Um, so, cool. Next week, then, we will go through all the 310 bugs, see where we stand on RSC, and be much excited about the final releases coming, I don't know, in the next month or two or something like that. Three, whenever it's all done. Visual Studio 2015 plus a month or something. Typical, right? Two months, hopefully. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, until next week, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.